Have you seen some of the new Soulbind abilities on the PTR? Some of them are looking absolutely broken, but we're here to give you the inside scoop on which ones you need to know about for patch 9.1. We're also going to recap this weekend's AWC tournament for both EU and NA as both regions had some of the craziest games we've ever seen. If you missed out on the live stream, we will show you some of the most exciting moments we have seen in WoW esports. And be sure to stick around because arenas are now live on the Burning Crusade beta. So get ready for a blast from the past with some exciting games and meta predictions and you definitely don't want to miss out. So if you want to learn about some of the broken things coming in the patch and what to expect for the AWC finals and classic TBC, then stick around because this one's for you. But before we get into it, we have a quick question. Are you planning on re-rolling next patch? Maybe you're sick of playing fire and looking to take frost for a spin. Or maybe you want to main a new class entirely. We want to know about it, so let us know what your plans are below for the upcoming season. And no matter what class you play next season, we've got you covered at skillcap.com slash wow, where you will find class courses and matchup breakdowns made by some of the best players in the world. Our guides are designed to directly improve your rating and skill in Arena, so if you want to dominate the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Starting off, Wowhead has released an updated Soulbind calculator, so if you haven't downloaded the Test Realm yet, you can preview some of the broken Soulbinds coming with the patch. One of the most broken things we've seen so far is from Naya and her new ability called Survivor's Rally. With Mages and Warlocks having Night Fae as their best covenant, both classes will be gaining some additional defensive power with this ability. When combined with the buffs to Warlocks and Frost Mages, it is likely going to make Mage Lock an absolutely broken comp. With many players eyeing comps like MLD, I personally have my eyes set on MLD. Less, which I predict will be one of the strongest comps in Season 2. The buff to Frost Mage and Destro Warlock damage will be a huge problem when combined with Sky Fury Totem. There is also a new end cap ability, Capped Bonded Hearts, which will passively heal the entire team during the arena game. And if we are able to learn anything from the past, Resto Shamans do incredibly well when they have lots of passive healing on their team. Now that Mage and Lock has some additional auto proc heal, I anticipate that MLS will be the comp to beat. And speaking of Resto Shamans, they will be getting some much needed coverage against melee DPS as they gain a new Soulbind ability for Necro Lord called Viscous Trail. This will make it much more difficult for melee DPS to train Shamans through a 70% AoE snare. And speaking of melee DPS, both Ret Paladins and Windwalker Monks will be getting even more burst damage with their Pelagos Soulbind. Their new end cap ability called Newfound Resolve will give them a 12% increase to their primary stat. The ability will spawn a Shadow Fiend during combat and if the player faces it, they will get a 12% increase to their primary stat. Since both Monks and Paladins cooldown stack with damage modifiers anyway, this additional buff will only increase their damage even further. So unfortunately, if you were hoping the Ret Paladin meta to end, it looks like their damage might be even scarier next patch. On top of that, Kyrian players are getting another new passive called Path of the Devoted, which will decrease their damage taken and make them almost invulnerable to snares after they get out of a CC. This will help directly counter the popular Mage Covenant passive called Soothing Voice, which snares you for 90% when you leave Polymorph or Frost Nova. And to cap this update off, both BM Hunters and Arms Warriors are about to see some huge damage increases, despite being some of the best DPS in the game at the moment. Venthyr is gaining a new end cap ability for Nadija the Mistblade called Fatal Flaw, which will grant them 20% versatility when their Euphoria ends. And while the sustained damage of both these classes is already high as it is, this will make their damage even more threatening, especially during Warbreaker or Bestial Wrath. Moving on, we have some pretty bold predictions as to what comps will be absolutely broken next season. As mentioned, the buffs to both Frost Mage and Destro Warlock will likely elevate both MLD and MLS to high tier status. So if you are waiting for the Wizard meta, this patch is for you. Assassination Rogues are also looking really promising. Mostly due to their ability called Hemotoxin. With the buffs to Arcane and Frost, we could definitely see Assass Arcane be the primary rogue mage comp in the patch. Arcane has been heavily slept on, so for this season, mostly due to how broken fire has been since the start of the expansion, Arcane is some of the highest burst possible in Arena with its new Arcanosphere ability and will definitely scale the tier list next patch. Finally, I wouldn't count Warriors and Rets out quite yet. They don't seem to be getting any significant nerfs so far in the patch, so they will likely remain some of the most dominant melee DPS specs in Arena. The only thing that might hold Rhett back is the increase of Mage and Warlock spell cleaves that we might see next season. But those are just our predictions, and we want to hear yours, so let us know in the comments below what classes and comps you expect to dominate the ladder next season. This weekend featured some of the best AWC games we've seen so far, as both EU and NA teams battled for the top four spots in the circuit. In Europe, we saw an intense series between Creed and Reload Esports, with the Game 4 match point coming down to a 2v2 situation on Empyrean Domain. With no CDs, 
Mercy's remaining at 63% dampening. Creed scored a kill onto Mercy, but with both healers, Um Ville of Reload Sports was able to land a cross kill on Baka of Creed. Finding themselves in a 2v2 situation, both teams inched their way forward, eventually with Ville scoring a killing blow onto Sazamizzi. Both teams will advance to the EU Finals on May 1st and will be joined by Skillcapped and Method EU in a double elimination bracket. Skillcapped looks to keep their perfect record going 7-0 in circuit play and will be challenged by the juggernauts of Method EU. Reload Sports and Creed will face off once again with Creed looking to secure the run back after Sunday's loss. And on the North American side, we got to see another 2v2 situation, this time between Cloud9 and Golden Guardians. Cloud9 was already well positioned to qualify for the finals, while Golden Guardians desperately needed this win in order to be seeded into bracket play. In an intense series, Game 5 found itself at a fitting final resting place as both teams went toe-to-toe -to -toe on Ruins of Lord Aaron. Locking in Rhett Hunter, Golden Guardians was looking to end the perfect record of Cloud9, who were undefeated going into this match. With the late game kill onto Whiskey, hope was all but lost, as Jellybeans pushed for a cross kill onto Wealthy Man. And with both healers nearly dead OOM, the game went on to an intense 2v2 situation. Slightly ahead of mana, Golden Guardians avoided some close calls and were able to push over the finish line, clinching a desperately needed win against the Titans of North America. Both teams will advance to the finals on May 2nd and will be joined by OTK and Method NA in a double elimination tournament. And it seems like Peekaboo is ready for the run back against OTK. Cloud9 and Method NA look to keep their dominance over the region, but with all teams having a at least one win over each other, this is poised to be one of the most competitive tournaments we have ever seen in WoW PvP. And finally, as of Tuesday the 20th, arenas are now live in the Burning Crusade beta servers. Those of you who are lucky enough to have the BC beta can now make a group to queue arena skirmishes. From some of the games we've seen so far, the meta is surprisingly fast. A lot of people were anticipating that BC games would be long and slow, but currently damage is high enough that most games are lasting under a minute. Of course, that might change once players get more resilience in queuing 3v3, so bear in mind that the games you see on streams don't paint a complete picture of the meta. As predicted, it seems like a lot of players are playing rogues, warlocks, mages, and warriors. Not only were these some of the best specs 14 years ago, but they continue to be quite dominant even with a higher skill capped player base. The damage and control from rogues is almost unmatched, and with debuffs like Wound, Poison, and Mortal Strike giving a 50% healing reduction, we anticipate that the most popular comps will have some combination of these classes. I'm personally looking forward to playing Burning Crusade again as a Restro Druid main. But of course, we want to know what your thoughts are on Classic TBC, so let us know in the comments below. Even if you didn't play 14 years ago, will you be playing BC when it comes out? If you are, what classes do you plan on playing? Will you be a Flavor of the Month PvP, or will you stick to your roots? Be sure to tune in next week, because we will be giving a complete tier list of classes in TBC. You might have a tier list in mind already, but will it match ours? There might be some sleeper specs that some people are ignoring, so you won't want to miss it. Going back to the year 2021, we will have to see what is in store for the rest of the PTR. It looks like Blizzard is trying to buff some of the underperforming classes next patch, but it seems like many of the most broken specs remain untouched. Once again, we want to keep you all up to date on this patch, so we will keep you informed on any important changes that happen on the PTR and any updates to the Burning Crusade meta. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, and if you want to stay up to date on any future changes, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. That way, you will never miss an upload. As always, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you soon.